Number three, Nero. It may not surprise you to learn he was Caligula's nephew, and well, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. In fairness, Nero didn't have a great role model. His mother murdered her husband Claudius, so Nero could ascend to the throne. At this time, he was only 16, and his mum, Agrippina, thought she could boss him around. And early on, she did, and things went pretty smoothly, although she didn't much like all the time he was spending with musicians and slave girls. But their relationship soured when Nero started an affair with Pope Sabinda. The mother-in-law didn't approve, as she was quite fond of his wife. Nero retaliated by arranging to have his mother's ship sunk. Miraculously, she survived and swam ashore, where one of Nero's henchmen polished her off. A while later, he divorced his wife, but the people of Rome rioted as she had quite a fan following. In response, Nero retroactively blamed the divorce on her adultery and had her killed. Nero caused another stir when he married a man named Pythagoras, and nope, it's not the guy you learned about in math class. This Pythagoras was a former slave. In a patriarchal, class-ridden society, it didn't go down well when the emperor emasculated himself by dressing as a woman to marry a low-born man. More personal drama followed when Nero kicked Pope to death. He quickly regretted it and went into an extended period of mourning, which only ended when he saw a slave boy who bore a remarkable resemblance to his murdered wife. He castrated the boy, made him dress up as Pope. Thereafter, the boy played the role of Nero's late wife. Beyond all this family drama, Nero was a fanboy for Caligula. He was determined to outdo Caligula's extravagance and spent a fortune on partying and doing up Rome. Rather suspiciously, a fire broke out in AD 64, which saw most of Rome destroyed. Nero, who was a musician, albeit a fairly bad one, supposedly played his lyre as the city burnt. He proceeded to rebuild Rome in his own image, leading to conspiracy theories that he, in fact, had started the fire. Needing a scapegoat, Nero pinned the blame on a newly formed Jewish sect, the Christians, and launched the first persecution against this group. This saw him whacking luminaries such as St. Peter and St. Paul. But while few in Rome were sympathetic to the Christians, they'd taken about as much of Nero's nonsense as they could bear. And in AD 68, members of the military rebelled. Nero hid in his palace and vowed to take his own life. But when push came to shove, he couldn't stomach it. So instead, he asked his last.